Hello, and welcome to Hello. today's webcast, Upgrading NetApp Cluster Data on Tap, Essential Preparation Steps and Tips, brought to you by Datalink. I'm Danielle Moore, Marketing Manager at Datalink, and I will be your moderator today. This webcast is designed to be interactive between you and the presenters. The webcast console you are looking at can be completely customized. You can resize or move any of the windows that you have open. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can click the Q&A widget at the bottom and submit your question. All questions from this webcast will be captured. If you are experiencing technical difficulties, please visit the webcast help guide by clicking on the question mark icon below the presentation window. I would now like to turn this over to our presenter, Tim Cook, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Daniel. Um, as Daniel mentioned, I'm Tim Cook. I'm a data center architect with uh, Datalink, and uh, today we'll be covering best practices around preparing and uh, um, verifying that you've had a successful cluster data type upgrade. Make sure these are getting presented out there. So just kind of a high-level overview of what we'll be covering today. Um, choosing the right version of ONTAP. So before you get started, you need to have a target release to go to. There's a few variables that factor into that, and we'll kind of cover that quickly. Utilizing Upgrade Advisor, um, that's a utility that NetApp provides that will actually present a step-by-step -step guide to actually go through the upgrade itself. Uh, Pre-upgrade requirements, so just letting you know what you should probably have in place before you start the upgrade so that you can be successful. Um, navigating the support matrix, this is probably the single most important part of a clustered ONTAP upgrade is making sure that everything within your environment is supported before and after the upgrade so that if you do run into any issues, um, you have no problems getting support either from NetApp or from third-party vendors that you might be using um, to tie directly back into your infrastructure. Uh, Post-upgrade validation, like I mentioned, just what should I look at to make sure that you know, the environment is healthy once I've completed everything? Um, some common issues that we see people running basis when you're doing any question you guys have. As Daniel mentioned, feel free to ask, you know, during the presentation itself and we'll answer as quickly as we can and if it's something that we can't get to right away, we'll follow up after the fact. So choosing the right ONTAP version. Um, some primary things to consider. Uh, is this upgrade code fix? So you know, if you've got a code fix, a lot of this stuff um, tends to be a non-issue. So, you know, things like the IMT, if you're just doing a, a minor change to your ONTAP version, that tends to be less important. Um, if you're looking at a feature release, then it's kind of, you want to make sure that you're um, deploying this in an environment that uh, is ready for whatever the new feature release might be. A lot of times with those new code upgrades, there's a lot of changes that go into it beyond just maybe a single feature that you're looking for. So you just want to make sure that you do a thorough review on those uh, major features. Without an existing mirror relationship. So, um, as of ONTAP 8.3, this is less of an issue, but if you're on version 8.2 or older, um, when you've got a snap mirror relationship, you need to keep those versions in alignment. Anytime you've got uh, something going from a source to a destination, you need to make sure that that destination version is always at the same or a newer version of ONTAP, otherwise, those mirror relationships are going to fail. Uh, as I mentioned before, external software. So we see a lot of problems here with customers that might upgrade on tap but don't think about the fact that, hey, I've got maybe a version of Veritas Net Backup that ties directly into this, and it's not supported with that newer version. So um, we want to make sure that those third parties actually are supporting this new version as well. So the major ones we typically see are Backup, Antivirus. Um, if you're doing any kind of quota software, QFS is uh, – one of the major vendors we see, and then access control kind of ties into that as well. So if you're doing any kind of user shares and you're doing third-party access control software, you want to make sure that that's all supported. Controllers supported themselves. So especially if you've got older hardware, if you're looking at, you know, three- to four-year-old hardware, you just want to make sure that it's still supported by those newer releases. What we'll see a lot of times is that uh, on the older hardware, it's not powerful enough to run the latest software. So you just want to make sure that that's uh, on the matrix. So kind of going back to verifying the controllers, if you're not familiar, NetApp has a utility um, called Hardware Universe. You can get to that at hwu.netapp.com. And within that Hardware Universe, it'll actually let you pick um, 
a version of ONTAP. So sorry, the text is a little small here, but on the left hand side, you've got versions of ONTAP. And once you select that, the right hand pane will actually give you the various controllers that they make. If you don't see your controller in that secondary list, that means that it's no longer supported. So this is kind of be your first step before you do anything else is, hey, let's just make sure that the hardware that I've got is actually going to be supported on the release that I want to go to. Next, if you're, you know, you want to, you know that you want to be on a certain release train, so a major release, whether it's 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, um, but you're not really sure exactly which version within that release train you should be getting to, NetApp actually provides a recommended on tap release out on their KB site. Um, again, you can come back to this after the fact and get this URL, but if you go directly to this URL, um, you're going to see this page that actually will tell you, you know, for a given release train, what's the best version to be on. Um, one thing you do want to check with this is sometimes it does get out of date, so always check the, um, the last time that it was updated. Uh, if it hasn't been updated in um, more than a month, you should probably reach out to your account team just to make sure that this is still accurate. But this is a real quick and easy way to go if you don't necessarily know exactly which version you want to be on. Um, that's a good place to check. Additionally, with the newest version of auto support, they've added an upgrade recommendation right on the front page. So when you go into the auto support page and click on your system, it's going to give you a nice uh, window right here at the front page. It's going to tell you what version to go to. What I've seen with this, though, is that it keeps you on the same major release train you're on. So if you're on 9.0, it's going to tell you like the latest 9.0 patch release or 8.3, the latest 8.3 patch release. So if you want to go to a new major version, that isn't a great place to check just because it's going to try and keep you on the release train that you're on. If you're just looking for a patch release, that tends to be updated automatically and it's always up to date, so that's another place that you can look. Last but not least, um, check with your account team. So what we've found is a lot of times um, a lot of those tools don't take everything into account, um, especially when it comes to you know, third-party utilities you might have tying in. Uh, just because it's such a large ecosystem that NetApp can't take into account everything. So um, your account team is generally going to know more about your environment than any tool can. Um, a lot of times there might be real corner case issues that the tool doesn't pick up that might affect your environment specifically that they can warn you about. They can assess the uh, risk to your feature versus patch releases, especially when you're looking releases, you probably want to get a second opinion before you make that move. And then um, Blink can actually get more detailed statistics directly from that app that we can use, you know, how many systems are on a given release, have we seen any issues in the field with that release, and we can get detailed stats that we can then take back and help you make a Next up, utilizing Upgrade Advisor. Again, like I mentioned before, this is a utility NetApp provides that actually will give you step-by-step -step, uh, upgrade instructions for getting to a new version of ONTAP. So you can find it right inside of the ASAP portal. So again, that auto support, if you go up to the there's an auto support link um, when you go inside of there. Then the left-hand pane, when it pops out, you'll see one that actually says Upgrade Advisor. Once you get in, it's pretty straightforward. So it's just you see four a list of serial numbers that you want to provide upgrades for. Um, I have these ones blanked out, but right here, the rest is list one or more serial numbers. They just get separated by times. Um, you can get those. You know, you'll see in the front page. If you are clicking an individual set, so you don't necessarily have to have them if you're if you're actually drilling down into your system before you hit upgrade advisor. This is going to let you pick which route you go to, so it's actually going to make a recommendation within here. Again, this typically isn't going to be a major release. Um, if whatever they recommend isn't what you want, this drop-down menu that you see kind of in the bottom middle, you can actually select the specific release that you want to go to. Um, by the you both controllers in an HA pair. If for some reason you only want to see upgrade steps for one, you can just deselect. And then on this page, you can pick how you want to do it. So we always recommend HTTP for your access methods. That's how you're getting software actually onto the controllers. Um, notify you when the um, process is complete. So when you can submit here, it's not going to instantly give you output. It's actually going to answer your system what the steps are going to be and um, if you don't want it completed. 
Across the top here, you can tell it whether or not you want to do um, non-disruptive upgrades. So uh, that's always something that we recommend. Keep in mind, um, SIFS type workloads are still going to see disruption. So when, when it says non-disruptive, that's primarily for block-based workloads um, and NFS type workloads. SIFS is still going to see a blip. Um, and then it also has option. You bring one of these out that you have the revert plan. That way, if anything goes wrong, you do need to call support. You can provide them the document that you've already got in place. Um, and you definitely want to have this all set up and in place prior to doing your upgrades because a lot of times you be doing your own maintenance on the weekends, and sometimes these sites go down. So make sure that you create this plan before you start with your upgrades just so that you've got something that you can provide to support. Um, it will definitely speed up the process if you do run into anything. And last but not least, once um, it's actually completed creating the plan, um, this page kind of gives you a summary of any reports that you've ever generated. Um, you just click on whichever report you want, hit download plan, and then it's going to save to your system. And then the output itself, uh, I'm going to see if I can't share out an actual live copy of this. Maybe my Bluetooth has not been working the great. Disconnected. It's a better day now. That's what it is. Um, we, you are breaking up. So. Still breaking up? All right. Let me try one other thing. Is that any better? Yeah, why don't you keep talking? That way we can hear. Okay. Sorry. Um, okay. Hopefully that's coming through a little bit more clear now. I'm going to, all right, we'll keep going. Um, so pre-upgrade requirements. Uh, just back to that PDF real quick. Um, it's not presenting out the way I wanted it to. This will actually give you step-by-step, -step, um, the step-by-step -step process for upgrading your systems. Keep in mind this is going to be pages and pages long. So, again, this isn't something you want to do last second. Um, this is something you're going to want to take a thorough review of ahead of time. Um, make sure that you give yourself plenty of preparation and, and go through it thoroughly. And then once you're through it, uh, if you have any questions, again, you can reach out to your account team if there's anything that looks off to you. Um, but it is literally a step-by-step -step guide. So this is real – it's great if you're trying to do, like, a command line-based upgrade and um, you're not exactly sure what the exact steps are. If you've never seen one of these before, I highly encourage you to take a look at one just so you can see what the upgrade process looks like. So from a pre-upgrade requirements perspective, um, one of the things you always want to make sure you do ahead of time is your disk and shelf firmware. Um, you can get all those from the support site. Uh, again, you can go back to these links and get directly to them, but um, there's going to be firmware for your disk. For the There's a disk qualification package, so basically that just tells the system um, details around new hard drives that might be coming out in the shelf firmware. This will all upgrade automatically in the background once you get it out into the system. So we typically recommend you try and get that out there a week ahead of time um, because it can take a long time, especially on systems that have um, a large number of drives. And, again, it's completely non-disruptive, so the users aren't going to notice it going on, but it's something that you want to have completed before you actually get into the upgrades themselves. Um, if you're looking for a specific new, new vert uh, feature, such as the volume encryption that came in uh, the latest nine releases, you're going to want to reach out ahead of time for that as well. Um, those can take several days to get those license keys. Um, and a lot of times with, like, the volume encryption, you actually have to place an order. Um, even if it's free, some of the licenses they still track. So to get that order processed and everything can take a while. So just make sure that you're, you know, giving yourself a couple of weeks ahead of time before you actually plan on doing the upgrade. Um, always check the IMT, so that support matrix that we're going to go through a little bit later on. You always want to make sure that you look there and validate that you're not getting yourself into a corner, upgrading on tap, and then maybe having external software that isn't compatible with the version you're going to. And then um, we recommend using a file server. So like I mentioned with the, the upgrade advisor doing HTTP, the easiest way to get the software onto the controllers is through a web server. If you're on Windows, there's a free version of software called HFS. Um, works really well. It's a real small download, so it doesn't take up a lot of space in your system, and um, the configuration is extremely easy to get through. And then if you're on a Mac system, 
or on Linux box for that matter. Um, Apache is built in on OS X, so there's a nice discussion link out there that'll actually walk you through step by step getting Apache set up. On Linux, um, you know, the internet is your friend. You can find it any number of places. Typically, you're not going to have Apache on there by default, but any kind of package manager should automate that install for you. So uh, this is just kind of showing you where the links themselves are. So I did provide those URLs, but if you're going out to the support site itself, if you hit on that downloads dropdown, um, the first link is for the disk drive firmware. The second one is for the disk shelf firmware. The qualifications package is actually buried within the disk drive firmware page, so that first top link that I have highlighted kind of in the background page there, that'll be the link for the disk qualification package. Make sure you get all three of them. Um, like I said, it kind of automates itself once you get them out into the system, but uh, you want to make sure you get those all updated ahead of time. So navigating the IMT. This is absolutely going to be the biggest thing. Um, you know, for people that are not a long time that have customers, the IMT has changed a ton over time. It can be a little bit daunting, um, but there is kind of a, a straightforward way to get to the most important information. So where is it at? On the front page of support.netapp.com, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, kind of on the lower right, you can see there, I circled it in red because I know the text is kind of small, but you're kind of at the bottom of the page. It's on the right-hand side, and you'll see the compatibility matrix right there. Once you click on that page, it's going to take you to this link that's actually got, they've got support matrix for some of their other software, whether it be uh, their on-command suite, um, they've got some stuff around Metro Cluster. The link that you guys are going to want is the one that's front and center right in the middle top of the page. Once you get inside of there, if we're just doing ONTAP upgrades, there's other searches you can do depending on what you're looking for within the IMT. I find the easiest way if you're just trying to do an ONTAP upgrade is to pick the one that's on the right there. And then once we get inside of here, you're going to want to go down to ONTAP. So this is listed in alphabetical order. If you scroll all the way down to ONTAP OS, then it's going to give you a list of all the releases in the right-hand side there. Um, this is basically just pick the major release. You're not necessarily always going to see uh, uh, all the way down to a P release. They do have it for some versions. They don't always. But as long as you're getting on the same major version or as close as possible, you should be good enough. So whether it's 9.1 or 823, as long as you've got, you know, to the latest dot that you can get to, uh, you should be fine. And then once you get inside of here, this is kind of the key, and, and you're going to want a game plan ahead of time. So there's like 150 tabs here for different pieces of software. Um, the ones that you're absolutely going to want to make sure you're staying on top of are the Snap Drive products, the Snap Manager products. Those are always going to be extremely picky about ONTAP versions. If you get misaligned there, you're going to get into a position where your backups may stop working. Um, firmware is always good to be on top of. It tends to be less important. You know, I'm not recommending you skip doing firmware upgrades, but just from a, is this thing going to work or not, it's probably not going to outright break, especially if you're just doing a major revision. Um, but what I always recommend customers do is kind of keep an internal list of which products you're using. So directly from that app, that tends to be fairly easy. Um, so, again, Snap Manager products, um, Snap Drive products, any kind of the external performance management software. So, the Uncommon Unified Manager, you've got like a list, and then it makes it fairly easy. So, again, these tabs are all in alphabetical order. Um, once you've picked your version of ONTAP, um, and then you drill down to one of these tabs, it's going to tell you which versions are going to be compatible with that version of ONTAP. Um, again, if you're just doing like a P release, this is probably necessary. So if you're going from like 8.2.3 P1 to P2, typically the IMT is not going to change. If it may add um, an additional newer version of software, but they typically aren't going to pull anything away. So if you've been compatible with the previous release, this is probably going to be less of a concern. Now, the other thing that you're not going to find in IMT are those third-party pieces of software. So that's something where you're going to need to check in with the vendor. So, again, the major ones that you're always going to want to check are your backup software. Um, from a virtualization perspective, typically VMware is pretty good, but you're, you're going to want to check their IMT because depending on what changes within ONTAP, it's going to affect those as well. Antivirus software is huge as well. So just make sure that you check with those third-party vendors. There's so many of them out there that NetApp can't encapsulate all of them within the IMT. Depending on what you're doing, some of it may show up, but for the most part, you're going to want to go directly to those vendors and validate that everything is supported. Um, the other big thing is uh, make sure that if a third-party vendor releases a new piece of software, you don't just immediately upgrade. You're going to want to make sure that the new software is actually compatible with the older versions of ONTAP as well. 
So that, that external ecosystem is huge as well. And then our post-upgrade validation. So what are we looking for once we've actually gotten these systems upgraded? So um, first off, make sure that your aggregates are online and healthy. That's kind of the base of the system. That's where all your rate is taking place. Um, if anything's going on there, that's kind of an immediate stop. Make sure you contact or don't do anything else. Same thing kind of goes up at the volume level. So typically, um, if you do have any kind of issues, it's going to be at the aggregate level, but especially if you've um, got, you know, different versions in your mirror in between the two of them, sometimes you can have inconsistencies with those volumes. Um, validate your snap mirror relationships. I, I didn't put it on here, but again, if you're on 8.2 or older, it's a huge deal. And once you get to 8.3 and newer, um, the versions of ONTAP don't necessarily matter for those snap mirror relationships, but you're going to want to make sure that those are still running the way you expect. Um, check your NAS shares from an end host. Check your LUN traffic from an end host. So um, you should have had multipathing set up ahead of time on all those systems. Um, and that, actually, that's probably something you want to have as part of the pre-upgrade check now that I think about it. But uh, making sure that you've got uh, multipathing software that's healthy across all of your SAN hosts is extremely important. And then just looking at the overall system health of the cluster. And I've got a few different places within here that you can check that that will show. So um, validating the aggregates are healthy. So if you're doing this from the command line, that's typically where I recommend because you're going to get more information when you're doing your post upgrade checks. Um, kind of the important things here, the RAID status in that right-hand column, that shows normal. Everything should be good. Um, if you've got any kind of issues, it's typically going to show inconsistent there. And the state of the aggregate is almost always going to be offline in that case. So if you've got any aggregates that are in an offline state or show inconsistent, again, that's kind of the point where you're absolutely going to want to get a ticket open with support. It's probably not something you should try and troubleshoot on your own. Um, system health, so there's a nice command within the CLI on ONTAP, so system health subsystem show. This is actually going to go um, through each of the subsystems within ONTAP and let you know um, if it's seeing any issues. So any kind of SAS connections, um, if you're having any issues with memory on the system. So a lot of times on those fresh boots is when you're going to start seeing memory errors. Um, keep in mind, too, if you didn't push firmware ahead of time, sometimes you may get some false positives here. Um, you know, if, it, if it's taking drives offline and stuff, you may see blips within the command line. So, um, again, we always recommend doing that ahead of time. And then volume status. So um, one command that kind of is, especially if you've got a ton of volumes out there, that is extremely helpful is the volume show and then dash is inconsistent true. That's basically saying, hey, if any, any volume out on this system is in an inconsistent state, and that's a state that we're concerned about. There's something wrong. It's going to list it here. In our case, everything's healthy, so you're not going to see any matching entries. And um, if you want to make sure that the command is working, you can always change that true to false. And if you do false, it should present all your volumes on the system. And then, again, check to see if anything's offline. It may be that you've got volumes that you intentionally put offline, but uh, Untap will mark volumes offline if it sees any issues with them as well. So that's another indicator that something's going on. And then from the GUI perspective, so if you don't want to check from the command line, uh, that's totally fine as well. So in this case, um, if you click on the aggregates themselves, it's going to give you a nice summary. Um, you can see, again, I apologize, it's a little small, but on the first column there, it's got the green uh, check marks. Those are going to turn red if there's anything going on with any of the aggregates. So again, that's kind of a sign that, hey, I should probably look at getting a support ticket open if you see any red on that aggregates page. Um, the systems themselves, so if you drill on the individual nodes, um, again, they've got green checkboxes. NetApp's pretty consistent with that. Um, if there's anything wrong, if the nodes are down, or if there's anything inconsistent with them, they're going to show up as red within the cluster page. Those are kind of the, the two places to look if you're going from the GUI. I still recommend, if you can, to check from the command line because, again, you're going to get more granular information there. And moving on to common issues. So what do we see? Um, especially if you're going through the GUI, so a lot of the, like the upgrade advisor is going to give you step-by-step -step from the command line. If you do this on the newer versions of ONTAP, um, the automated upgrades within the GUI, 
Um, it typically will not break stiff stop blocks. So basically what that means is if you've got a kind of client their window accessing the system, and they're actively using the system, it can cause those failovers not to uh, function appropriately. If if you feel comfortable doing it, you can go into the command line and tell it to force the takeover, which will keep the upgrade moving along. Um, if not, again, that's something where you can reach out to support and just have them verify that everything is healthy within the system and that forcing that isn't going to break something else. Um, auto boot image not set correctly. So as part of that upgrade process, when the system reboots, it actually says, hey, I've got this new boot image that I'm going to use. If that doesn't get set appropriately, a lot of times what you see is the node will actually reboot on the old version. Again, this is something where you should probably reach out to support to have them validate it for you. But if that auto boot image gets set incorrectly, it's not that it was broken. It's just that somewhere in that last step where it was saying, hey, I've got this new image I want to boot off of, that didn't get set appropriately. Uh, if you've got any failed hardware in the system, do not try to attempt an upgrade. Um, if it's just a failed hard drive, you can pull the hard drive out and do the upgrade. We always recommend you get that hardware fixed ahead of time. Um, if you try and do an upgrade while you've got failed hardware, it's going to fail. It's not going to continue. It's going to say, hey, I've got something broken here and I'm not going to keep going until you replace that. So before you get started, always make sure that you've got um, all the hardware in a healthy state, including hard drives. That tends to be the biggest one that people run into. And then the firmware updates. So if you choose not to push the disk firmware and the shell firmware ahead of time, um, it's going to try and upgrade that as part of the process of upgrading on tap, and that can cause those upgrades to take significantly longer than you were originally planning on. So always make sure you get those pushed ahead of time. Um, and last but not least, uh, it's not listed here, but you can always up, open up a ticket ahead of time if you've got an upgrade planned, and we always recommend you do. That lets the support team know that, you know, you may run into issues that evening. They can make sure that they've got somebody that has kind of taken a look ahead of time and making sure that they're up to date on what state your system is in, and, and that tends to make that upgrade process a little bit smoother if anything does go wrong. So do we have any questions or Daniel, is there, are there any slides that maybe I should run back to, given it was breaking up earlier? It doesn't look like we have any questions that haven't been answered, so I think we can okay. um, wrap it up. Thank you, everyone, okay. for attending today's webcast. An on-demand version will be available within two to three days, and you will receive an email notification once the recording is available. Thanks again for participating.